what's up out there? Welcome back to the wine program. This is my channel and podcast about what every waiter, waitress, line cook, and restaurant manager needs to know about wine, otherwise known as wine for the restaurant work. We're going to be talking about some critical BS today. It's very, very important that you understand the difference between conventional, sustainable, organic, and biodynamic farming. Why? Because it's going to come up. Because people in the marketplace are somewhat concerned about pesticide use. I definitely know when I sell wine at a table, if I say something like they're farming all organically or it's biodynamic, it's a very clean vineyard, you know, that's a good selling point because you want to sell, obviously. And a lot of these expensive farming practices sometimes translate into the price of the wine. When I first got into the business, when I was working at Whole Foods, our organic wine section was almost like considered generic. People were like, I don't want any organic wine. What is that? You know, it was just like this funky category that nobody really understood. Of course, I'm you know, I'm old, this is a long time ago. Now organic is like, yeah, we love organic, right? And no straw either. Let's begin with conventional farming, okay? Or in our case, viticulture. I call it industrial viticulture or industrial farming. And it's the one that feeds the planet. This is very, very necessary. Now, the idea of conventional viticulture is this concept that the farmer is spraying with pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides as much as they need to kill any bugs or weeds or fungus that may destroy their crop or their vineyard. However, there are some pros and cons. Pros are it works, right? I mean, go to any grocery store in America and you're going to find aisles and aisles, shelves and shelves full of cheap wine that's fine to drink. And we need cheap wine. Not everybody can afford a $20, $30, $40 bottle. And, uh, you know, let's just be honest. Like, I'd rather have people drinking cheap wine if they can't afford anything else. The cons are, is that all those chemicals can deplete the microbiology of the soil. So things like bacteria, fungi, algae, protozoa, yeast that helps with fermentation, these can all be depleted. And then you have to, like, replete them or up them up with synthetic fertilizer. So it becomes this kind of vicious circle of like addition. And you don't really want that. And also, a lot of those chemicals can leach off and drain out into local waterways. It can poison wildlife. There is another thing, is that these chemicals can poison vineyard workers. Now there is a pretty popular, commercially and industrial available weed killer called Roundup. You might have it in your garage at home. Now there's a lot of lawsuits that are pending or that have been settled. I don't know, I'm not a scientist, I don't wanna get sued, but allegedly it can be pretty dangerous to humans. That's all I know. I've talked to people who would be like, you could drink a glass of it and be fine. I swear to God, I had a guy say that to me once, right? You gotta do your own research again, I don't know. But the other thing about it is that it can wind up in your wine glass because you're not washing the grapes when you bring them in. It's not like your carrots and your celery where you're peeling them and scrubbing them or whatever. Whatever comes in goes in the wine. That's just something to consider. Now, above conventional is sustainable, but I want to jump one rung up the ladder to organic because sustainable is like a mixture of conventional and organic farming, all right? So it uses a little bit of both of these. Now, generally speaking, organic is the easiest to define because it is government regulated. It's a legal definition, okay? So in America, we have USDA organic. This is a federal, obviously, US, federal government institution that will give you the USDA organic seal if the final product is following their rules, rules that are set out by the federal government or California certified organic farmers. They have their own, but again, so it's federal or state or local, but it's a legal term. In order to use that USDA organic seal, the final product must follow standards that address soil quality, animal raising, pest and weed control, no synthetic fertilizers, no uh, sewage being used for irrigation, no irradiation, no genetic engineering, etc., etc. And all organic produce, in this case grapes, must be grown on soil that has not been treated with any prohibited substances for three years prior to the harvest that you're trying to get certified. And again, this is certification that you pay for, right? People come out and they inspect and then you pay them and then you pay for that seal. Just to give you an idea, with organic viticulture, they're only allowing about 25 pesticides, okay? That's all you can really, that's all they're really approving. Whereas you compare that to conventional, they're allowing like over 900 different chemicals. So that's a lot. That's a significant difference, right? But there is one, I'd say a little bit controversial thing that is allowed within organic farming and it's the use of copper, or I think it's copper sulfate. And copper is a really powerful antifungal. Remember we talked about rot and mildew? So you can get wiped out by rot and mildew. 
Copper sounds natural, I guess, but it's uh, toxic to your soil. Again, it can deplete your microbiology. So I don't think people want to use it more than they need to, but I think just on a business level, they just said, all right, if it's gonna, you know, make everybody happy, we're gonna allow a little bit of copper. One other thing I want to talk about. You will not see certified organic on a bottle of wine if it contains sulfide. Now, sulfur dioxide, AKA sulfites, this is basically a preservative that I honestly think, and many people think, is harmless. It's a preservative and it inhibits oxygen uh, damage to wine, and that basically just greatly decreases the chances of your wine altering or turning to vinegar. So if you want to make wine and sell it on a grand commercial level, you kind of have to use a little bit of sulfites, okay? But according to USDA Organic, they're not going to allow you to. It's not bottled with sulfites, right? It shouldn't say it contains sulfites. There's a, a winemaker, his name is uh, Robert Sinsky, and he's been around forever. And actually, his wines are quite good. And what he does is on the back of his label, he'll put, this wine was made using organically grown grapes. But since he's kind of like a mini major producer and he wants to sell his wine all over the place, he's using sulfites. But So he can't actually have his wine as a finished product be certified organic. Now, between organic and conventional, there's something called sustainable farming. Now, sustainable viticulture tries to balance organic practices with conventional practices. I like to cite Sustainability in Practice Certified of California, otherwise known as SIP. SIP helps farmers and winemakers preserve and protect natural and human resources with private, not government, certification. So they can use some harmful chemicals, like Roundup, for instance, but they will try to balance that out. It's almost like a cap and trade. So they'll try to balance out some of that chemical use with things like, you know, water conservation, energy conservation, the effects of your agriculture on the air quality, the carbon footprint of your practices, the carbon footprint of your wine packaging. Also, they want to take into consideration like how you're treating your workers, what you're doing in the community, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there are some people who I've spoken to, one in particular, who's a pretty hardcore farmer up in Oregon, and we were talking about this, and he said, uh, you know, sustainable is just uh, greenwashing, meaning it's just like some way to like make people think that you're green, but you're really not. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would rather drink sustainably farmed wine than conventionally farmed wine, but what the hell do I know? Like, I'm from Chicago. I grew up drinking old style and Cuervo gold. So, like, what the fuck do I know? Uh, but just so you have the information. Now, at the top of the ladder, the most woke, the most pristine, the most cleanest, kind of bestest, hippest, coolest, resurgent uh, method of farming is called biodynamic farming. I just want to tell you, real quick, the guy who created this philosophy was named Dr. Rudolf Steiner. He is a German philosopher who was around in the 1920s, and he became very, very uh, alarmed by industrial agriculture. Again, damage to wildlife and streams, etc., etc. So he created this philosophy. I'm just going to give it to you in a nutshell, okay? Biodynamic agriculture views the farm as a self-contained, self-sustaining ecosystem. What that really means is that nothing that is not inherent to the vineyard is brought in to be used as a fertilizer or an herbicide or a pesticide. Soil, plants, animals, and humans all work together to create this like holistic kind of kumbaya thing. And it's this very like um, pristine method of farming, monitored and certified by an organization called Demeter. They're not government, they're private, they're in Europe, they're in America. And I would assume that there is some high cost to this. Practical example, what is biodynamic? What does this mean? Let's just say you're having a problem with weeds, okay? You're not going to go out there and spray Roundup, dude. You're going to get your sheep or your goats and you're going to be like, hey guys, go fucking clean up those weeds. And they're going to like go up and down your rows and they're going to eat the weeds. Then you're going to use their manure as fertilizer. Duh! Nothing's going to waste there. If you have pests that are damaging your grapes or your vines, you're not going to spray it with like Raid or whatever they're using. You're going to uh, propagate predator bugs that already exist in your vineyard, like ladybugs is a really popular thing. And then you'll propagate those and then those will go out and they'll kill the damaging pests, right? If you have a problem with fungus, you're not going to spray copper. You're not going to do this like Bordeaux treatment. You're going to make a tea or like a tincture out of like horsetail and dandelion that's already growing on your property. You're going to infuse that with liquid, you're going to put it in a sprayer, and you're going to go out and spray your leaves. And apparently this works. Uh, another thing is you're not going to bring diesel tractors or mechanical pickers into your vineyard. You're going to use like horses and mules and humans, etc, etc, etc. So that all sounds great, doesn't it? I mean, like, how could that be bad? Now, 
there is another aspect to biodynamics. And this is where it gets a little like voodoo, you know, hippy dippy. There's an astrological aspect to it. And this is the idea that all the elements of your agricultural practices are done in concert with the cycles of the moon. So astrology can dictate when you plant, when you irrigate, when you harvest, when you're pruning. It can also translate into the winery in terms of like when you're racking your wine around or blending, etc., etc. I personally have been to two biodynamic vineyards in the south of France that were owned by a guy named Gerard Bertrand. And Gerard has an interesting story. He was a professional rugby player. His father owned a winery. His father passed away tragically in a car accident. And Gerard kind of took over the family business and really, really um, excelled. He is a businessman, but he's also a really big proponent of organic and biodynamic farming. In fact, He's going around buying up vineyards, converting them to organic or converting them to biodynamic and making really excellent wine that's still very affordable. I asked Gerard one time, I got to meet him, uh, and I said, hey Gerard, what's the difference between organic and biodynamic farming and which is better? And he said this quote to me, which I think is very, very telling. He said, listen, they're both very good. Organic is very, very good, but anybody can farm organically. Okay, it's just a matter of not buying some things and buying other things. It's like a shopping list, basically. But biodynamic farming is more of like a philosophy that you have to buy into, okay? And I will tell you that this guy totally loves biodynamic farming. He has bought in 100%. He's drank all the biodynamic Kool-Aid there is. He even wrote a book on the subject, and it's called Wine, Moon, and Star. Uh, now, two of his wines on the high end are biodynamic, and they are really some of the most terroir-driven, site-specific, really beautiful wines coming out of the south of France I've ever tasted. And again, comparison to like what this bottle would sell if it was like from Bordeaux, I mean, it's still a great value, right? But my point is this, biodynamic kicks ass, okay? Finish the story, right? Now, you can farm organically and not be certified because you don't want to spend the money. Another thing people are going to tell you, you're going to go out to their vineyard and they're going to say, yeah, basically I'm organic, but I don't want to spend the money to get certified. I don't want some government weirdos coming around, snooping around my business, okay? Because you have to pay them, right, to certify you organic. So it is a cost. So some people will say, yeah, I'm farming organically, or even will say, yeah, I'm biodynamic, but I don't have Demeter come out here. I don't want to pay. And maybe that's true. Probably that's true. It depends. I mean, if you're at the vineyard and you see a thing of Roundup in their shed, obviously you know they're lying. <laughs> but, you know, you kind of got to take them on their word. The only real way to know is if they're actually getting that certification. But then again, that's something that people have to pay for. So, I think that's it. That's all you need to know about sustainable, organic, biodynamic, and the lowly conventional farming, right? So please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the wine program. We're going to be back here next week. We're going to talk about this concept of terroir. Like, what is that? Remember, it's not what you know. It's what you need to know. All right? Wash your hands out there, folks. Don't touch your face. Adios and peace. Peace. peace, peace.